going on, everybody? So, as you can see from the blue background, it says SmackDown. I got my blue shirt, team SmackDown shirt on, which you already know what that means. That means it's the one and only Smack Little Big Man SmackDown review. So, with that being said, uh, so that was fairly standard. I mean, nothing too surprising happened. We did get some QR codes, further mentionings of it. And, you know, I liked how they even referenced how the last time that happened, you know, they remember the last time that some QR codes and stuff was popping up and led to Bray Wyatt's return. So it's about the, I, I think it's safe to assume we're getting close to Bray Wyatt's return. Uh, without, that's not what started the show. They started the show with a straight match, which is the, first the first match or of the night and it was the queen of the ring round two uh tournament for smackdown which is bianca belair versus tiffany stratton and yes the rumors all that online stuff about tiffany stratton getting uh you know pulled from smackdown no they didn't pull it and it's, it's what i expected it to be um even though I did do that video when I said that she should be suspended. And I only said that because, I mean, you posted a video. I mean, they, you know, people I said, well, she didn't, she probably didn't know that it had edits in it. I mean, I mean, come on. We, we are adults here. You, you, you mean to tell me you went and just seen a video that somebody curated of you punching Jay Cargill and you didn't go check for edits and anything you just posted it all right but anyway we're here so bianca it, it was a good match i enjoyed it um they they still played up the leg injury from last week uh even with tiffany started even taking advantage of it and they didn't you know you could tell they not punish her because they didn't make her look weak they didn't make her look anything Tip, uh, tiffany looked it good here she didn't yeah they didn't punish her in no way except before uh, or I guess you could say by not having her move on, if you want to call that a punishment, she didn't get the victory here. But of course, she wasn't. I mean, her her time is going to come at the uh, at uh, Money in the Bank. But nonetheless, a good match. And then Bianca, after a while working Bianca over, she was end up hitting uh, KOD on the one on one leg and getting the victory. Um, then we got a, a brief – it was a brief promo because it really wasn't like uh, words were said, but we got Logan Paul walking in the back, getting ready to go into Nick Aldis' um, uh, office. You can hear every night in the office telling Nick Aldis some stuff, and then he comes out and has to stare down with uh, with Logan Paul. With I think L.A. is the only one who said something. He was like, yeah, see, uh, see you, champ. And um, Nick came out and he enjoyed the stare down and tells uh, no, Nick is right there when he says it. And then he finally tells uh, Logan to, c- to come on and go in his room and t- in his office at all. And that's when Ellen Knight says, Yeah, see you, champ. Uh, and then we get um, we get Jay Cargill, she got a backstage promo basically talking about uh, defeating Nia Jax. And moving on in the Queen of the Wing tournament, and man, do I got stuff to say about that when that comes up. Um, and then we get an LA Knight promo, where it's basically he's talking about his uh match later on tonight, but then he'll get interrupted by Carmelo Hayes with him and Carmelo Hayes jaw jacking with each other. And then we'll finally get to um uh, the second match of the night, which is Tama Tonga versus LA Knight. Um, this was. This was good. Uh, I know they building a story up with Randy Orton and Tama Tonga. I would prefer, I would have preferred LA Knight get the victory here. I, I just don't feel like burying. Oh, I won't even say they burying. I just don't think Tama Tonga should have went over LA Knight. But that's what they, that's what people are saying about uh, a drag. Uh, what's his, what's his name? Uh, Ilya and Jay Uso. Nobody thought he should have been. Nobody thought Jay should have went over Ilya, but I actually would have preferred both of them, either or. I think if, if Ilya would have won or Jay would have won, it was good to me. But here, yeah, I don't think Thomas should have went over Ilya Knight. But 
nonetheless, it was a good match between the two. And I enjoyed it. And um, yeah, Tomatonga get the victory thanks to some shenanigans from the bloodline. Uh, then we got a continuation. It was just a continuation of the um, previous one where him, where LA Knight and Carmelo were jaw jacking with each other. And uh, they they would get into a seven match that had to be separated. Uh, and then we get to the contract sign between Cody Rose and Logan Paul. Um, pretty standard contract sign until Logan Paul pulled some shenanigans. I guess basically up until this point, Nick Aldis had had talks with uh, Co- uh, not with Cody with Logan uh, about basically uh, you know that both titles would be on the line. But he rips up the contract, has a new one, just where Cody's title is on the line and his is not. He said he never agreed to have his title on the line, that Cody hasn't done anything to earn a shot at the United States Championship. So that so in tune, and so he is a new contract. And I think Cody ended up, you know, Cody was trying to teach him a lesson, but the difference between him being a wrestling, uh, between him and the people in attendance being wrestling fans. And him being like a, a a tourist, if you will. Uh, but then he just basically uh, uh, that's when we get into the whole dispute about that. But they'll end up signing a contract. Uh, Logan Paul will try to uh, fight uh, Cody, but Cody will end up uh, stopping him. And then he put one of his goons through the table. Um, then we got a Nia Jax promo where she just basically talked about beating Jay Cargill and said that Jay Cargill ain't gonna get past her. And, she, and Nia was the shot of the night, as I would say, where the camera will follow her from that interview all the way to the ring. Except <laughs> the cameraman got lost. Uh, when they went through the curtain to go to the st- you know. When they get when they got to the curtain, he was following Naya, but he kind of lacked a little bit. So when Naya went through the uh, curtain, he went through the curtain. He went through. He went behind her and lost her. So they had to cut to the other camera that was already out there. But I'm like, oh man, they messed up the shot. They messed up the shot. But yeah, that will lead to the next match, which is Naya, uh, Naya Jazz versus Jay Cargill. For this was be another. Queen on the ring qualifier match. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to say this without dragging it on too long. Um, it was an okay match, but they, it just basically was they had a little uh, strong woman competition. Or I would say they just try to outstrong each other, but they end up fighting once it. But that was it. Like I think Nia just knocks Jay out and Jay down, and then they fight on the outside. It was it was like a basically a five minute match. They just fight. They they get to they get to each other's face. Then Nia hits uh, Jay, knocking to the ground. They roll out the ring. I think um, no, I think Jay Cargill hit over the spine buster. Yeah, they she hit her. She hit not on the ground, but then she'll get back up, hit her with a spine buster. Then they'll get on the outside of the ring, and then they'll stay. That's where they'll pretty much stay for the rest of the match. They'll brawl for the outside. The referee trying to get control. Uh, Naya would taunt Jay's daughter, uh, <laughs> telling her that her, your mom sucks. Um, I, and I like Jay's daughter, man. She she stood up the night. She said, "No, no, she's not." <laughs> I'm like, oh, that was cute. Hilarious. Uh, Naya would then, like, would destroy the table and, and, and throw some chairs and stuff around and then pick up another chair. Like, she was about to hit Jay with it, but Jay would catch it. And then she would hit Naya with the chair, causing a DQ finish. And I'm just like, what? Out of all the all the ways you could have just had uh, had Jay lose so, you, so we could hold off on having – Jay versus Bianca, uh, you you had her losing a lame DQ finish in a five minute match. Uh, they were brought, they were getting to like a brawl, like the fight. Basically, after that, the re- like even though the match was over, they basically in total, it like it lasted like ten, maybe ten minutes. But that was because we got five minutes of actual wrestling, uh, actual 
the, the actual match and then five or six more minutes of the brawl after the bell was rung and then that was it um Oh, I think uh, I forgot to mention too when Jay had that backstage promo earlier. Bianca was there, and uh, whatnot. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Then we get to the next match, which is a fun little tag team match with DIY versus Angel Garza and Herberto uh, Carrillo, who with uh, Grayson Waller and Austin Theory at ringside. This was being billed as uh, I think this is where the QR code popped in. The QR code either popped there doing the the Nia and J match, or um, or the DIY match. Can't remember. Um, it was it was in between one of these things, but uh, it was a fun little match with DIY getting a victory and possibly a chance at uh, Austin Theory or Austin Theory aggressive water down the line. Um, then we get an AJ Styles uh, promo backstage where he was talking about what's next for him and since losing in the, in the, in the King of the Ring tournament and um, and losing against Cody, he said next he goes to the uh, he said the only thing he could tell is that he's going to the Nick Aldis uh, room and that's whatever happens in that room once he has his meeting with Nick Aldis that will be next for AJ Styles. Then we'll get a. Uh, Backstage promo with Bailey talking about uh, how she he she was looking. I guess she was asked about since Jay was gone because she they asked her already and she said she was looking at Jay, but since Jay has been eliminated from the tournament, she was getting ready to say who's a new favorite to look out for, but she was getting interrupted by Piper Niven and Chelsea Green, and she would get mad or uh, agitated and said that uh, instead of talking back here. We'll talk next week because we don't really got time to talk about here right now, but we can talk next week. How about we do it in the ring? Um, which I guess they try to set up a, a program with Piper and Bailey. I would say it's not, it don't look like it's going to be Chelsea. It's more so like Piper and Bailey. Then we get the main event, which is Randy Orton versus uh, Carmelo. Uh, Carmelo Hayes uh, in the main, yeah, like I guess I already said the main event, right, guys? Um, which is the King of the Ring tournament. Um, this was good. I like it. This was, I, I like it because again, they give somebody who could work well with Carmelo and him and Randy Orton and Carmelo really work well with each other. Um, especially with the way how Carmelo liked the sales and he can actually, he's one of the people that helps do the out of nowhere spots when it comes to the RKO. And that's how, that's what we did get. We did after a nice little match with even with Carmelo working over Randy's leg. As Randy was also like a, like Bianca had their leg worked over last week, and he will try to take advantage of it. But because Randy Orton is a savvy veteran that he is, we got like we got like an agitated Randy who who did his signature table backdrop like a couple of times, and then we seen the usual, and then we hit the RKO out of nowhere. Randy Orton moves on, and now he will face Tama Tonga next week. Uh, which is in J- both SmackDown and King of the Ring next week will be in uh, Saudi. Um, with Randy, whoever wins next Friday will go to the uh, King of the Ring tournament to face the winner of Monday Night Raw for the title of King of the Ring and also Queen of the Ring. Uh, also, Tom Tonga came down to uh, to do like a stare down intimidation of Randy Orton with Randy Orton said, you must not know who I am. Allow me to reintroduce myself. I'm Randy freaking Orton, a 14 time world champion. And you know, you know, he's the apex predator, blah, blah, blah. Basically saying you can't intimidate me. Uh, and that was it. Yeah. They ended the show with that, uh, with them basically telling each other, we'll see you next week. Um, this was a fair, like I said, fairly standard Friday Night SmackDown, nothing too much. It was like again another solid SmackDown focusing on the King of the Ring. Most of the storytelling came from that. Uh, we're getting close to Uncle Holly and the supposed Y Six faction returning, so looking forward to that. I'm going to give this SmackDown. It was it was average. No, it was above average. I mean, I give it a seven. I was going to give it a six, but I give it a seven. Out of ten, because but you let me know in the comments down below what you thought. And if you enjoy my review, of this you know what to do. You hit this button right there for all of my 
done any reviews and if you enjoyed this video so much you want to support the channel all you gotta do is hit that like subscribe share hit those notification buttons do all those great things because we're trying to get to ten thousand subscribers before we we before we set a new goal and as always anyone in these videos more of my amazing content but they're going anywhere guys i got some reactions and more stuff for you guys peace